I don't know how to start this off really. Hello. So after about a week and a half of adjusting my phone so that it's the right level, I'm now going to talk to you about Before You Were Mine by Carolyn Duffy. <laughs> go along with our series of GCSE poems from the Love and Relationships cluster of the AQA anthology, um, preparing you for Literature Paper 2 Section B. So I'm going to talk to you about Before You Were Mine. Okay, a title like Before You Were Mine, when it's we know it's a poem about a parent-child relationship, might suggest to you that this is the parent talking about how they feel about their child. But actually, the reality is that um, what Duffy has done with this poem is that she's kind of subverted that or she's um, done a reversal. So it's actually the child talking about the parent and the child talking about ownership of the parent, which is slightly unusual and sets a slightly um, potentially sinister or um, unusual tone for this poem. We start with, like with all the other poems, the big message of the poem. What is this poem about? Um, so this is a poem obviously about a parent-child relationship um, lots of the stuff that you'll see online talks about how this poem is speaking, looking at a picture of their mother from 10 years previous to their birth um, and seeing her as a, a happy-go-lucky teenager um, who is unaware of, of what's to come in her life and reflecting on how much she admires that uh, teenage girl and how she would love to have met her and, and, and would have loved to have had that as her mother or, or have known that version of her mother. Um, so this is a poem that's very much about, I think, self-identity um, within that parent-child relationship, like reflecting on her own um, impact that she had on her mother. Um, it's also a nostalgic poem. It's a poem about reminiscence. It very much romanticises um, her mother's life previous to her birth. Um, and I think it's a poem of contrasts, and I think it's a poem about um, the inevitable passage of time um, and the way that the one thing we can rely on in this world um, to always happen is change and growth and um, development. First up, we want to talk about standout language features. So it's really important to remember when you're writing about these poems that you you really don't have to say everything about everything in the poem. It's about making really judicious, hashtag straight from the mark scheme, judicious choices about the things that you're going to talk about in relation to this, to the language and the structure of this poem. You can't possibly, in the 45 minutes that you've got, talk about everything. So you've got to be um, precise in your in your choices. Okay, so the two things that I'm going to pick out language-wise then are our contrasting um, types of language in this poem. So we have got bright, hopeful, happy, exciting language in this poem. We've got quotes and fizzy movie tomorrows and as you shriek with laughter and glamorous and love lasts and waltz and sparkle and stars. Um, we've got words like sweetheart. Um, which are words that really glamorises the speaker's mother's life before she was born. This language of a hopeful youth, um, those fizzy movie tomorrows, like I mentioned, it's thinking about what could be, the, the magic to come, very kind of Hollywoodized. And in the middle of that, we've obviously, at the end of the first stanza, got that word Marilyn, um, standing alone um, on its own there, a woman who... Um, epitomise glamour and Hollywood and beauty and youth and freedom and femininity but obviously as we know um, Marilyn Monroe also comes with um, the story of her death and the death of that um, that kind of glamour and that and that glitz which leads us on to the contrasting language in the poem which is language which is much harsher the language of possession um, language which is almost intrusive and interrupts those kind of fizzy, happy, um, reminiscent and romanticised ideas. So we've got quotes like, um, my loud possessive yell, we've got your ghost clatters, um, stamping stars on the wrong pavement. So much harsher, more plosive sounding words. Um, which give that sense of how the speaker is reflecting on their view of 
of the way that their mother's her mother's life changed when she was born um, that glamour that hope that youth um, that vitality was interrupted and intruded um, quite literally by the sound of, of a child crying by her birth um, which gives you that sense of um, how she's reflecting on the before and after of her mother's life on to structure then this poem is split into four equal stanzas of equal length and what this represents is firstly that going back to that sense of the photo album so this idea that the speaker is looking through a series of photos um, that show her her mother's life before she was born um, so each of those stanzas could represent another photo that she's seeing um, the other kind of thing that we can say about the structure of this poem in terms of those four equal stanzas is that um, they represent the inevitable passage of time, like I've mentioned before. So it's another layer that supports that meaning. Um, and what that does is it shows us the kind of regularity of time passing um, and the fact that it's something that we can always rely on and is always there. The final stanza is... Um, it sounds different in my opinion to the other three stanzas it's much more caring um, it's more present she's reflecting on um, rather than her mother's life before she was born she's thinking about her actual upbringing um, you know being taught to dance on the way home from mass uh, that final line where she brings back the title before you are mine previously it's either the title or it comes just after a moment of sejora which makes it stand alone and, and sound more negative. Whereas at the end, it fits into that, like your glamorous love lasts, you sparkle and waltz before you are mine. It's all together, it's much softer, and it feels much kinder and much more admirable. Which leads me nicely onto tone. So the tone of this poem is, as I said, there's an admiring tone, there's a wistful tone, um, and I think the admiration comes from a sense of admiration for her mother's rebellion. She talks about her mother staying out too late and not caring about the consequences. You think it's worth it, she says. Um, she says, I knew you would dance like that. What does that suggest? That maybe she's dancing provocatively or, um, you know, dancing with a, pers with a, a boy, maybe, that she shouldn't have been. Um, so there's that sense of admiration, and there's a sense of real affection for her mother um, and a weird kind of tinge of sadness and maybe even negativity in terms of her feelings of responsibility or guilt towards her mother for, for taking that time away from her or for um, causing her to kind of lose that part of herself. Okay, so in terms of what we compare this to, um, a mother any distance obviously works really well but I was also thinking that poems like Eden Rock and Walking Away could work really nicely. Okay, so that's my um, whistle-stop tour of Before You Are Mine. There's obviously lots more that you can say about this poem, but those are the kind of standout things that I wanted to say. Okay, thanks, bye, love you, mean it. Uh, oh, hi, guys. Um, hi there. I'm longing this out. Sejora, come on, Marshall. Um, yeah, it comes after a moment in. Um, oh.